Now that we've looked over the content that we have, let's get started actually writing some code. So we're gonna start building up our system from its smallest and simplest parts, which are actions. So we're gonna create a new C-sharp script in our scripts folder called action. And we're going to open it in MonoDevelop. And so action is going to be an abstract class. So we're never gonna actually instantiate instances of action we are going to use it as a base class for all our other actions that we're gonna create. We're gonna delete, start, and update. It's not going to be a mono behavior. It's going to be a scriptable object. And it is going to have in it a single public function, which is also gonna be abstract. We're gonna override it in the inheriting classes. It's gonna return void and be called act and it is going to take a state controller variable called controller. And you're gonna see this in almost all the functions we write today, that they're all gonna take a state controller variable uh, that we're going to pass in when we call the function. We can save that, that's all there is to that class. So actions are gonna be called from states in our system, and each state can have a number of actions that it will call like for example, chase or attack. So we're gonna create our state class next. So I'm just gonna jump back over to Unity, right click on scripts, create c -sharp script, and this one is gonna be called state. And it's gonna be very similar to action in that it's also going to be a scriptable object. It's not going to be an abstract class because we actually are going to create assets out of this. So we are going to add the create asset menu attribute and pass in the menu name pluggable AI state. So we're going to create state assets in our project using this class. So whichever state is currently active is gonna be updated every frame by our state controller. So we're gonna need a function that the state controller is gonna to call to do that. So we are going to add a public function that returns void called update state. And that's also gonna take a state controller called controller. Each time we call update state, we want to evaluate each of our actions and eventually decisions when we add them. So we're going to add in a new function called do actions. It's going to be private, it's going to return void, and it's going to be called do actions, and it's also going to take a state controller. Now, we need a collection to hold our actions, and so we're going to add a public array of actions called actions, and we'll set those in the inspector. In do actions, we want to loop over that collection with a for loop. So we're gonna declare a for loop, and the length is going to be actions.length. In our for loop, we're gonna call the act function of each of our actions. So we're gonna say actions i dot act, and we're gonna pass in our controller, right? So we're continuously passing through our reference to our state controller. So let's talk about that. So notice that both of our functions have a state controller parameter, and this is because we are continuously passing through a reference to whichever mono behavior is calling these functions of our state asset. So you might wonder why we don't just create a state controller variable for our class and use that. And the reason is that our state scriptable object is an asset and will need to be referred to by multiple agents, multiple tanks in the scene. And if we allow one of our scenes to set a variable on it, that will become a value for any other object that references it. So I made a picture. So this is the incorrect use, right? So here we have one scene object up on the top and it, let's say, gets shot, takes some damage that it's supposed to take. 
if we're storing the hit points in the red scriptable object asset, then now when our other tank goes to check the hit points value, it will also have taken damage, right? Because it's referencing the asset that is in the project folder, not a unique instance of it. So as a general rule of thumb, it's useful to think of your scriptable objects as behaving similarly to materials or other assets in a Unity project, because they're assets, if you create variables on them and change those values, they'll be shared between everything that references that scriptable object, and the values will also persist after you exit play mode. So this is why we're using the delegate pattern and always passing any scene references in as parameters to a function. This allows our scriptable object to know what scene object it's interacting with and to keep those interactions discrete, right? So we can see here in our correct example, we are passing through our data as an argument to the function call and getting back a response in the return value to the scene object. Or we could have the scriptable object be setting values on the scene objects. That's okay, right? As long as we're not setting fields or setting variables on the scriptable object, because then that's gonna get shared between all our scene objects and you can have a little bit of a mess. And this is, I, I take the time to show these graphics and to really emphasize this, because this is a mistake that I personally have made in the past and I've seen other people make. Okay, so now, We've got update state, right? We need to call, do actions from update state, pass in our controller for the reasons that we just outlined. And now we want to call update state from our state controller. So let's switch over to the state controller script. And so we want the state controller to be able to update the current state that it's in. So we are going to add a public state called current state. And then we're going to add an update function. Because remember, state controller is a mono behavior, right? So it's gonna call, awake, and update, and so on, which our scriptable objects will not. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna check our bool if not AI active, then we're gonna return, right? We're not gonna do anything. If the AI is not active, we don't wanna update the state, but if the AI is active, we're gonna call current state dot update state and pass through this, right? So this is where we're gonna start that chain of passing through a reference to this state controller, which is attached to a tank in the scene into our, ch our set of scriptable object assets. Okay, so now, before we switch over into Unity and create our first state, we're going to set up some simple visualization tools in the scene view using gizmos. So those were the gizmos that we were looking at when we were looking at the demo, right? The, the wire spheres and the lines. Uh, so we're gonna draw those and we're gonna draw them in the state controller we are gonna call void on draw gizmos. This is part of the Unity API. And on draw gizmos is going to allow us to draw things in the scene view that don't get displayed in the game view. So first of all, we want to check if the if current state does not equal null and if the eyes transform also does not equal null. And the reason is that we'll get a bunch of errors if these things are not assigned and uh, this method gets called. So we're just gonna make sure that those are not null. And anyway, we need them to not be null in order for the game to work. Uh, and then we are going to set the color of our gizmos. So we're gonna say gizmos.color equals, but what we want it to equal is the a color assigned to our current state. So we're actually gonna add that to our state class. So I'm gonna switch over to the state and we're going to add a public color called scene gizmo color. And let's initialize it to color.green. Actually, let's make it gray just so we know 
that it's not getting set. And save the state. And then here we'll say gizmos.color equal current state dot scene gizmo color. So now we can see what state our agent is in by looking at the color of the gizmo. And then we're going to draw our wire sphere. So we're going to say gizmos.draw wire sphere. And we're going to pass in eyes dot position, and I'll show you the eyes in a second so we can see what that is. And then enemy stats dot look sphere cast radius. So this is the value is currently two. So it is going to draw a sphere with a radius of two at the eyes position. So we've referred to the eyes before without seeing them. So let's just take a look at them. In Unity, I'm going to temporarily drag in my AI tank chaser prefab to the scene. F to frame selected, expand it, and we will see here there's an empty game object called eyes that's just positioned in front of the tank. So this is where it's going to perform its looking and attacking from. We're just using it as a point in space. And this is already set in the state controller. We've already dragged a reference to it. So you don't need to worry about it. Okay, so we can delete that. And let's just make sure we save our state controller, save our state. And so now, so let me take a, take a couple questions before I continue. The next thing that we're gonna do is create our first real action. Uh, but before I do that, let me see how everybody's doing. GM Liquid Media asks, is there a way to show gizmos in the game view so that players could see them? You know, I'm not aware of that. The last time I did this, I actually had meshes in the scene which were visible. I didn't want to do that this time because I wanted to show how to draw your own gizmos. But I do think it would be useful to have something visible in the game view just generally for your game design so that your players could tell what state the AI was in by looking at them. Um, but that is really going to be dependent on your game and, and what, you know, your, what your agents are supposed to be like. Um, I've been playing Horizon Zero Dawn a lot lately, and they have a nice system where the color of the uh, robot's sort of light eye thing changes based on the state they're in, right? So they're red if they're attacking, blue if they're idle, yellow if they're alert, uh, and it's a really clear way for you, could for you to tell what the robots are thinking. Uh, so that's a nice example of that. 